At the heart of Israel's modern history lies the story of Zionism, a movement birthed in the late 19th century amidst rising anti-Semitism in Europe. This nationalist and political ideology aimed to establish a Jewish state in the area historically known as Palestine. The movement's name is inspired by Zion, a hill in Jerusalem. The origins of Zionism can be traced back to 1860, when Theodor Herzl, a Jewish journalist, proposed that Jews should leave Europe to escape anti-Semitism and the threat of cultural assimilation. He envisioned a safe haven for Jews in Palestine. Herzl's publication Der Judenstaat, or The Jewish State, articulated this vision, catapulting him to prominence within the Jewish community. In pursuit of this goal, Herzl organized the first Zionist Congress in Basel in 1897. This gathering marked a significant step in the Zionist movement, setting the stage for concerted efforts towards establishing a Jewish homeland. Herzl sought support for his cause at an international level, engaging with influential figures such as German Emperor Wilhelm II and Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid II, though his attempts were initially met with limited success. The movement gained momentum in the early 20th century, particularly after the Balfour Declaration of 1917, which supported the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, then an Ottoman region with a small minority Jewish population. But Arthur James Balfour, known for the Balfour Declaration, is often noted for his anti-Semitic views. In 1905, he supported the Aliens Act, designed to curb the immigration of Russian Jews to Britain, citing them as undesirable. Balfour's advocacy for a Jewish homeland in Palestine was partly influenced by his preference to not have Jewish individuals in British society. He regarded Zionism as a means to ease the historical discomfort that the Jewish presence had ostensibly caused in Western civilization, a presence which he felt Europe could neither fully expel nor assimilate. The aftermath of World War I saw the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, leading to the British taking administrative control of Palestine under the League of Nations mandate system. This period, known as the British Mandate, was marked by increased Jewish immigration and growing tensions between the Jewish and Arab populations as well as with the British authorities. A significant event during this time was the Arab Revolt of 1936-1939. This uprising was a response to both British governance and the increasing Jewish immigration. The revolt led to the British White Paper of 1939, which proposed the establishment of a joint Arab-Jewish state attempting to address the conflicting national aspirations in the region. Following the Arab Revolt, there were numerous attacks by Jewish paramilitary groups, with the Irgun being one of the most active. Irgun carried out 60 attacks against Palestinian and British targets and was described as a terrorist organization by sources including the New York Times and prominent figures like UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Irgun attacks encompassed assaults on British police stations, assassinations, bombings of transport and infrastructure, as well as strikes against British military and administrative targets. Notable incidents include the 1946 bombing of the King David Hotel, which resulted in 91 deaths, including 28 British citizens 
and a series of attacks in 1947 that caused numerous casualties among British, Arab and Jewish populations. The horrific events of the Holocaust during World War II intensified the urgency of the Zionist quest for a sovereign Jewish state. The genocide of six million Jews by Nazi Germany galvanized international sympathy and support for the Jewish cause. In 1947, thousands of European Jews, many of whom survived the Holocaust, embarked on a journey aboard the Exodus 1947 ship heading to British-controlled Palestine, seeking a new beginning in the Promised Land their journey was abruptly halted when British naval forces intercepted and forcibly returned them to Europe. This event, extensively reported by the media, incited global condemnation and underscored the need for a resolution to the escalating Palestine crisis. In response, the United Nations formed a special committee that recommended a partition plan. 56.47% of the Palestinian territory for a Jewish state and 44.53% for an Arab state. While Jewish leaders accepted this proposal, Palestinian representatives firmly rejected it. On November 29th, the United Nations General Assembly voted in favor of this partition plan, with 33 countries supporting it, 13 opposing, and 10 abstaining. This pivotal moment set the stage for the next series of events. In 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the first Prime Minister of Israel, publicly announced the Proclamation of Independence on May 14th. This declaration, which came into effect the following day, marked the end of the British mandate in Palestine and the emergence of Israel. This historic proclamation, however, signified a moment of profound loss for Palestinians, known as the Nakba, or catastrophe, leading to widespread displacement and dispossession. But Israel managed to not only defend its sovereignty, but also extend its territory beyond the UN partition plan's proposed boundaries. During the period of the Arab-Israeli conflict, Approximately 726,000 Palestinians either fled or were expelled from their homes, according to United Nations data. The exact number of these refugees remains a subject of debate, but it is estimated that about 80% of the Arab population that lived in what is now Israel were displaced. In 1956, the geopolitical landscape of the Middle East was again reshaped by the Second Arab-Israeli War, also known as the Suez Crisis. The conflict erupted when President Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt decided to nationalize the Suez Canal, which had previously been under the control of the British and French through the Suez Canal Company. In a strategic response, Israel formed an alliance with the United Kingdom and France, leading to Israel's occupation of the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula. However, this military occupation was short-lived. Under significant pressure from both the United States and the Soviet Union, two dominant superpowers of the time, the Israeli army was compelled to withdraw its troops from these areas. In 1959, a pivotal development occurred in the Palestinian political landscape. Yasser Arafat, a charismatic and influential figure, founded Fatah in Gaza and Kuwait. 
Fatah, a Palestinian nationalist political party, later became a central component of the Palestine Liberation Organization, signifying a significant step in the organized Palestinian resistance against Israeli occupation. The 1967 Third Arab-Israeli War, also known as the Six-Day War, brought profound and lasting changes to the region. On June 5, 1967, Israel launched a preemptive strike against Egyptian airfields, destroying a significant portion of Egypt's air force. Simultaneous strikes were launched against other Arab states. The conflict lasted for six days, and Israel decisively defeated its Arab neighbors and significantly expanded its territory. As a result of this conflict, Israel seized control over several key territories, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, and the Golan Heights from Syria. This territorial expansion by Israel further complicated the already tense regional dynamics and had long-lasting implications for the Arab-Israeli conflict, shaping the geopolitical boundaries and conflicts that continue to affect the Middle East to this day. In 1973, a significant escalation in the Arab-Israeli conflict occurred with the outbreak of the Yom Kippur War. This conflict began on October 6th, coinciding with the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, when Egyptian and Syrian armies launched coordinated offensives against Israel. This sudden attack marked the beginning of a highly intense regional war that lasted 19 days. Despite the initial successes of the Egyptian and Syrian forces, Israel eventually managed to repel the Arab armies. A pivotal moment in the history of the Middle East came in 1979 with the signing of the Israeli-Egyptian peace agreement in Washington, D.C. This historic agreement followed the Camp David Accords of 1978, brokered by U.S. President Jimmy Carter and signed by Egyptian President Anwar Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem begin. The peace treaty, a first of its kind between Israel and an Arab state, included provisions for Egypt to regain control of the Sinai Peninsula, which it had lost to Israel during the Six-Day War. This agreement was groundbreaking as Sadat became the first Arab leader to officially recognize the State of Israel, setting a precedent for future peace negotiations in the region. The year 1982 was marked by significant and tragic events in the history of the Israeli-Arab conflict, particularly with Israel's military incursion into Lebanon, known as Operation Peace for Galilee. Led by Defense Minister Ariel Sharon, this operation had the initial objective of eliminating Palestinian guerrilla bases in southern Lebanon, which Israel viewed as a threat. However, the scope of the operation expanded significantly, with Israeli troops advancing to the Lebanese capital, Beirut. This military campaign had profound consequences. The Palestinian Liberation Organization under Yasser Arafat, which had established a strong presence in Lebanon, was effectively routed. This left the Palestinian refugee camps in the country, particularly in Beirut, vulnerable and largely defenseless. A horrifying episode unfolded between September 16th and 18th, when Lebanese Christian phalangist militiamen, who had ties to Israel, entered the Sabra and Shatila refugee camps in Beirut. The militiamen perpetrated a brutal massacre of the Palestinian and Lebanese Shiite inhabitants of the camps. This massacre caused international outrage 
and highlighted the severe humanitarian issues in the region. The late 1980s and early 1990s were a period of significant upheaval and change in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In 1987, a major development occurred with the eruption of the first Palestinian Intifada, an uprising that began in Palestinian refugee camps in Gaza and quickly spread to the West Bank. This uprising, often called the War of Stones, became a powerful symbol of Palestinian resistance against Israeli rule. Characterized by widespread protests and clashes, often involving stone-throwing Palestinian demonstrators against the Israeli military, the Intifada lasted until 1993. It resulted in the loss of over 1,000 Palestinian lives and marked a significant shift in the nature and intensity of the conflict. During this period of unrest, Hamas emerged as a new and influential player in the Palestinian political landscape. A major turning point came in 1993 with the signing of the Oslo Accords, a result of months of intense and secret negotiations. Yasser Arafat, representing the Palestinians, and Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin signed the Accords, which were aimed at laying the groundwork for a lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Under the Oslo Accords, the Palestinian Authority was established gaining administrative control over parts of the West Bank and Gaza. The signing ceremony, held on September 13th on the White House lawn and attended by US President Bill Clinton, was a historic moment. It was marked by a symbolic handshake between Arafat and Rabin and was witnessed by an estimated 400 million television viewers worldwide. This event was seen as a hopeful sign of potential peace and cooperation in a region long plagued by conflict and strife. 1995 saw a critical and tragic event in Israeli history with the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin on November 4th. Rabin a prominent advocate for the Oslo Accords and the peace process, was killed by a Jewish extremist during a peace rally in Tel Aviv, dealing a major blow to the peace efforts and significantly impacting Israeli politics and society. The following year, 1996, marked a significant shift in Israeli politics as Benjamin Netanyahu was elected Prime Minister for the first time. Netanyahu's leadership steered the country towards more conservative and right-leaning policies, especially regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In 2000, tensions escalated dramatically when Ariel Sharon, the leader of the Likud party, visited the contentious Al-Aqsa Temple Mount site in Jerusalem on September 28th. This act was perceived as a provocation by many Palestinians and ignited the Second Intifada, or Al-Aqsa Intifada. On October 12, 2000, amid ongoing conflicts, two Israeli soldiers entered the Palestinian-controlled city of Ramallah and were detained by the Palestinian Authority police. The soldiers were initially planned to be brought to a police station under the Palestinian Authority for detention. However, a group of Palestinians waiting outside the station stormed the building and killed the two Israeli soldiers. In response to this incident, Israel launched an airstrike, targeting and destroying several locations in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, controlled by the Palestinian Authority. 
This intense period of conflict, which lasted until 2005, resulted in the deaths of around 3,000 Palestinians and 1,000 Israelis. During the Second Intifada, there were numerous suicide bombings, shootings and other attacks by Palestinian militants against Israeli civilians and security forces, as well as military operations by Israel in Palestinian territories. This period significantly impacted the peace process and relations between Israelis and Palestinians. Ariel Sharon assumed the role of Israeli Prime Minister in 2001. His tenure was marked by a severing of ties with Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat and a siege on Arafat's compound in Ramallah, exacerbating the already strained Israel-Palestinian Authority relations. 2002 was a year of significant developments. The Israeli government launched Operation Defensive Shield and commenced the construction of a separation barrier between Israel and the West Bank. This barrier, aimed at improving security for Israel, faced widespread criticism as a de facto annexation of Palestinian territories. The same year also saw the United Nations Security Council endorsing the two-state solution for the first time, advocating for the coexistence of Israel and Palestine. Following the death of Yasser Arafat in November 2004, Mahmoud Abbas was elected president of the Palestinian Authority in January 2005. That same year, under Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's direction, Israel unilaterally withdrew from the Gaza Strip, concluding a 38-year occupation. This withdrawal significantly changed the administrative and geopolitical situation in Gaza. 2007 witnessed a major shift in the control of Palestinian territories. Following internal clashes between Hamas and Fatah forces, Hamas emerged as the dominant power in the Gaza Strip. This development created a geographical and political divide, with Hamas ruling Gaza and the Fatah-led Palestinian Authority governing parts of the West Bank. A blockade has been imposed by Israel and Egypt on the movement of goods and people in and out of the Gaza Strip since 2007, following Hamas's takeover. This blockade has raised serious concerns regarding its humanitarian and economic impacts. It has led to limited access to essential supplies and health care and has hindered economic development opportunities in the Gaza Strip. In 2008, the Israel Defense Forces IDF conducted a significant military operation in Gaza starting on December 27th, which resulted in over 200 deaths on the first day. This initial assault was followed by a two-week ground invasion. A United Nations report later determined that actions by both Israel and Hamas during this conflict amounted to war crimes. In 2010, the Mavi Marmara incident occurred when a Turkish-led flotilla aimed to breach Israel's Gaza blockade. Israeli commandos boarded the Mavi Marmara on May 31, 2010, resulting in a violent confrontation, nine Turkish activists killed. This incident strained Israel-Turkey relations and drew global attention to the blockade. In response, Israel eased the Gaza blockade to allow more goods in. In 2011, Israel and Hamas conducted a notable prisoner swap. The deal, brokered after lengthy negotiations, 
involved the release of Gilad Shalit, an Israeli soldier who had been captured by Hamas in 2006. In exchange, Israel released 1,027 Palestinian prisoners, many of whom were serving sentences for involvement in attacks against Israeli targets. 2014 saw a significant escalation in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In June, the abduction and murder of three Israeli teenagers near Hebron in the West Bank led to widespread tension. Israeli authorities held Hamas responsible for the incident. On July 8, Israel initiated a series of airstrikes on Gaza, which led to a seven-week exchange of fire with Hamas. The conflict resulted in over 2,200 Palestinian deaths in Gaza. The tension between Israel and Gaza has notably escalated over the years. In 2018, the Gaza Strip's border with Israel was the site of major protests, dubbed the Great March of Return, which were directed against Israel's blockade of Gaza. These protests resulted in significant Palestinian casualties, including at least 189 deaths. The situation further intensified in 2021, when tensions at Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque led to violent clashes and an exchange of rocket fire and airstrikes between Hamas and Israel. This conflict, spanning 11 days, resulted in over 200 deaths, underscoring the deep-rooted and ongoing nature of the conflict between the two sides. On October 7, 2023, militants from Hamas and Islamic Jihad, considered terrorist groups by Israel, the US and some European countries, attacked Israel from Gaza. They killed over a thousand civilians, including children, and took more than 250 people hostage. Among the hostages were not only elderly individuals, but also children. Israel's response to the attack was unprecedented in scale. It began aerial bombardments on the area, inhabited by two million people, and blocked the entry of water, fuel, food and medical aid into the Gaza Strip. Israel killed over 14,300 people, with more than 6,000 of them being children, as reported by November 23rd. 2023. Negotiations for the release of the hostages led to an initial agreement on the release of some women and children held by Hamas in exchange for some Palestinian women and children under 19 in Israeli prisons. During the editing of this video, the conflict had not yet ended. As we conclude this segment, it's clear that the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians shows no signs of abating soon. The continued occupation and expansion of settlements by Israel further exacerbate tensions and hinder the prospects for peace. The recent attacks and the heavy-handed response have only deepened the despair and suffering on both sides, with casualties rising and a resolution seeming more distant than ever. Thank you for watching.